Welcome hey, everybody. Welcome. We're just going to let everyone get in here a little bit and we will start in just a minute. Thanks for joining today. Yeah, thanks for coming in, you guys. Um, you might have expected um, some gals to do these Galentine's Day crafts, but John and I thought um, it was a great opportunity to come hang out with you and make some cool Valentines uh, for everybody in your life. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna be going over uh, Mod Podge, Mod Podge paper. We're also going to be adding a bunch of glitter um, just with Mod Podge and also with uh, Folk Art Glitterific. So we have a few different projects to cover here. Um, John's gonna be answering questions in the messages. So if you have any questions, you can direct message him or um, he can relay them to me. Uh, like I said, we're gonna start with um, our gloss Mod Podge. So this is our just traditional formula of Mod Podge and we'll kind of run through all the different uses that we have used um, it for for these projects. So I wanna start out by showing uh, the star of our show here. So this is our really cool um, embellished wine bottle. So uh, this kind of shows you that you can spice up a gift of you know, uh, any kind of drinks you wanna bring your friends. Um, since we probably aren't gathering much for Valentine's Day this year, we thought this would be cool for your gal pals. Um, so yeah, so we'll talk about making a wrap for that. Then we'll go through these cute little cards. So we've got these little um, craft smart bulk cards that you can personalize using Mod Podge and glitter, like I said before. And we'll walk through doing that and using stencils with Mod Podge because that's something people don't often associate with Mod Podge as a decoupage medium. Um, all right, so we'll go ahead and get started here. So. We're gonna start with our wine bottle. So as you can see, we've kind of just made a simple little sleeve out of scrapbook paper for this. And you can choose any print that you want. You can do um, a really festive one, or this is also great for uh, birthdays. So you can use any kind of paper, Christmas, all the holidays are great uh, for these. So I'm going to go through the papers that I have here. I've just pulled a random selection of three different little papers that Michael sells. You can find these in the scrapbook section. You can find card stocked if you want a bit of a heavier weight. These are just that traditional 12 by 12 scrapbook paper. They're relatively thin. They're about the same thickness as printer paper. So we're gonna start with that. And we'll lay that down. And Alyssa, I've got, well, um, oh, sorry, John. Yeah, I was gonna say, while you're getting started and getting, um, getting everything together, I wanted to make sure that everyone um, opens up their chat screen and follows along there. If you have any questions, please ask me. Also, we are going to be doing a giveaway at the end of this class. Uh, why not? So I will randomly go through and select a winner from people who have commented. So, um, you know, please feel free to do that throughout the uh, broadcast today while he is teaching and any questions that you have, shoot them my way and I will make sure that those get answered. So yeah, make sure you guys ask any questions that you have. Like I said, this is kind of a basic one-on-one -on -one class as far as Mod Podge goes, um, and just yes. adding a little bit onto that. And you probably weren't expecting the two of us to be handling the Valentine's Day or <laughs> Galentine's Day class, but you know, it is what it is. So it's Broventine. This is a big season, this is a big season for John and I. We also celebrate uh, Broventine's Day. That's, so that's right. Like Valentine's Day is for everybody, single, in a relationship. We just all like to have fun, right? We're all about the bromance here. So yeah, let's get going. <laughs> all right, so um, we're gonna do our wine bottle wrap first. Now um, I'm using a an empty wine bottle, wah, wah, unfortunately today to be able to craft on, make it a little bit easier. But like I said at the beginning, I encourage you uh, to give the full bottle uh, to your um, recipient of your gift. And this is just for me to craft on a little bit easier, but. Um, you can use any kind of uh, beverage. You could do like sparkling um, sodas, you can do wine, you can do liquor bottles, anything you have. So I'm gonna start with that. And I've kind of gone ahead and pre-cut my um, size. So this wine bottle, the one on the project listing, I just kind of traced that out and made sure that my wrap was about the same size. The wine bottle I'm gonna be crafting on is a little bit um, longer. So I'm going to just make it a bit longer there. So. First, you want to kind of get placement on your wrapper. So I want this one to kind of cover the entire bottle, as you can see. And I'm going to kind of lay this flat and then wrap my bottle and see where I can start to trim. So Dylan, suppose the bottle is not round. Would it work on yeah. like a square, like liquor bottle type thing too? 
Yeah, you know, we've seen a lot of trends lately of people using um, like tequila bottles that are more that like that flat squatty round um, square yeah. shape. And those are really good too. Those are probably even a bit easier because you can, instead of making a label that wraps around the whole thing, you can kind of just cover the main label and embellish it. So there's that option as well. There you go. Gonna, Kinds yeah, of options. So I'm, yeah, I'm gonna trim this up a little bit. You could even do this to individual beer bottles, you know? Um, it'd be kind of cool to have a six pack with uh, some personalization. All right. So like I said, I'm going to cut this and it's just about perfect there on my bottle. And I'm going to grab my montage. So we're gonna be using our gloss formula, just our traditional formula of Mod Podge. Um, anything you have that is either, you know, anything in this line, basically. You could use matte, you could use satin, you can use gloss, you can use dishwasher safe if this is more of like a uh, multiple use kind of situation. If you wanna kind of use your bottle, if you're doing this on like a tumbler or something, you can use the dishwasher safe. But like I said, I'm just gonna go with our classic Mod Podge gloss. So I'm gonna pour that out on my little tray. Okay, so I am going to apply a little bit of that Mod Podge straight to my bottle face here. So I guess you could go and remove the label if um, you wanna really prep your surface, but this is just kind of as a gift. So we're not gonna worry about um, taking off the entire label that's on there. This is gonna cover it super easy. I'm gonna use one of my little Mod Podge brushes and I'm going to start to apply my Mod Podge. Now, the great thing about this is it's super clear. And since it's that gloss formula, you're not going to see it when it dries. So I can kind of go up around the edges here. It's totally fine. And you won't see it at all. So I'm going to get like a good coat on there. And then I'm going to start to apply my label, my new label. So what are the Mod Podge brushes that you're using? Somebody was just asking about those. Um... They're not, yeah, a, these it's not a, a silicone brush. It's a regular brush, right? No. Yeah. These are normal bristles. Um, they're these little shorty brushes that we make. We also have a different style, these kind of longer, sleeker brushes. Um, this is one of the thinner ones. These come in a two pack. They both come in a two pack. So you can either get these guys. Um, the larger one is a big king candle, and this one's just this little orange. And the same goes for these. You can use either large or the small size. Yeah. And as long as you wash them out real good before the uh, Mod Podge dries in there, then you, you, you're you fine. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna kind of center my label. The great thing about this is uh, you don't have to be perfect because at the end of the day, you're giving somebody an awesome gift. So if your label's a little wonky, you know, it's all good, all good. They're getting a bottle of, uh, of wine to have some fun. All right, so I'm gonna take my Mod Podge with that front part attached. I'm just gonna kind of go and coat the back here. Now there are so many different ways you can do this. You know, I'm just using a pattern paper and I'm gonna add some glitter and some accents to it. Um, the project on the, the your Michael's class listing has a little added um, little graphic that says Galentine's Day on it. You could search uh, the web for any kind of Valentine's Day clip art. You could put pictures on here. I've seen all kinds of glittered um, alcohol bottles on TikTok. If you're on TikTok, we do have a, a TikTok channel, Plaid, F, um, Plaid Crafts, and then Mod Podge has its own TikTok as well. But you'll see that a lot on there. People are doing these as gifts. So we wanted to kind of get in on the trend. All right, so I fully coated. And I'm just gonna kind of wrap this guy around. Now, one thing I will note is that when Mod Podge is first applied, you kind of get a little bit of bubbling and you kind of want to note that that will all go away. So as soon as this guy dries out, all those little ridges and imperfections will go away. You want to try and smooth it out as best you can, um, but that's one thing that I've learned in the studio here that you should not necessarily worry if you've got those wrinkles, they'll usually flatten right out. Okay. So since it's so tacky and um, and adheres to that paper, we're good. We can keep crafting on this. If you're doing this along at home, I might suggest uh, either throwing a hair dryer on it to um, expedite your drying process, or you can also just leave it overnight just to make sure it's fully dry. Um, but like I said, you can keep crafting on it as well. 
So I'm going to grab our slightly smaller brush. So that little tiny Mod, Pod br Mod Podge brush um, that we were talking about a little bit earlier. And I'm gonna kind of make some free form brush strokes. So you'll see on our example here, we have almost like fingerprints size little splotches of glitter. So that's where we take in a little brush, any kind of paint brush you have, but again, I'm using the little Mod Podge brush and just apply a good helping of that Mod Podge gloss and then we're gonna apply some uh, glitter. So go ahead and do that. And like I said, they're just kind of free form brush strokes. We're not gonna be super careful. Um, we just wanna add a little bit of a kind of an abstract accent there. And I'm gonna work every few. I'm not going to let these dry too much because I want to be able to apply my glitter. I'm just gonna do about five or six of these little brush strokes and then put some cool glitter on there. All right, so I'm gonna be using uh, recollections uh, in the glitter section. We've got this chunky rose gold glitter. So I'm gonna use that to apply to our bottle. I'm gonna grab a little plate here for some overflow. You already see glitter taking over the space if you look close enough. So it's gonna be a, a bit of a messy craft. Everybody loves glitter mess. Everybody loves glitter. I'm gonna apply a little bit more Mod Podge just to make sure I get lots of glitter sticking. So you kind of have to work quickly. Just you put do a few down, quick. then do your I'm glitter, and then do much. a few more. Yeah. The cool thing is you can always apply a little more, right? So yeah, if it dries up on you. You can just put a little bit more on there. And as Jen C just said, uh, if you have a bigger tray or something that you can you can glitter on top of, that makes. Yes. Clean up a little bit easier than a tiny yeah, little paper plate. I, I kind of, yeah, I kind of shot myself in the foot here. This is kind of a comical situation of the plate being too small, but we're, we're dealing with it. We're dealing <laughs> with it. <laughs> we can reuse that glitter. Okay, yeah, reuse. so you see, that really takes it up a notch. It's really cool, right? So I'm going to do a few more of those. Okay, so I just saw um, Jen C. Wilson. She just said, or you can use glitter glue. So I'm going to show you another um, yeah. cool product in just a second. So we have a product called Folk Art Glitterific, and it is basically 100% glitter paint. You've seen glitter glues, but this is a glitter paint. So it's a clear base with a bunch of different kinds of glitter particles suspended. Everything from those big holographic flakes down to your super fine glitter. So I'm gonna show you that in just a second. You might change your mind on glitter glue. Um, it's kind of superior to glitter glue. Hmm. All right, dump a few of those off. So you can see I've just done like basically the top two rows there with this. All right, so I'm going to switch over. So I'm gonna talk about that product that we were just talking about. So we have Folk Art Glitterific here. So I've just chosen a few colors. This is our neon pink. We've got a copper color here and a champagne color. And I even got this really pretty kaleidoscope color. So it's all these different colors mixed in. So I'm Dylan, can you hold that up real close to the yeah. overhead just so we can get a good shot of it? Yeah. Of what it's like. So that's Folk Art Glitterific, guys. I'm going to put it in the chat. If you don't, haven't tried it before, you're going to be a super fan once you try it because yeah. it is awesome. Yeah. I mean, yes, Glitterific is one of the coolest products we make. Everybody, you know, whether you like glitter or not, you can't, uh, you can't argue with the fact that this is the most glittery glitter paint known to mankind. So we're going to, I think, use, I don't know, I th since we've already used rose gold, I think I'm going to go for this um, copper color. So this one is cinnamon. We have a bunch of different ranges in the line, too. It goes for everywhere from these really vibrant neon pink color. We got neon yellow, neon blue, and then you have some classic like metallic colors. So I'm going to kind of go with my theme here and use this guy. All right. I'm going to grab another little paintbrush to apply this with. So the great thing about Glitterific is it's the same cleanup as any other kind of our folk art acrylic paint. So water-based cleanup. So I'm just going to use a regular paintbrush. This doesn't have to be a disposable thing. Like you're not going to ruin your paintbrush if you use Glitterific. Um, we also recommend if you have like a little silicone application tool, that's something that we use in the studio a ton. It's just super convenient. You can clean the glitter off really easily and a lot of different tools are out there on the market. 
Okay, so I'm just gonna take my uh, glitterific right out of the bottle and I'm gonna do the same thing. And you'll see that this kind of just all happens in about one brush stroke. So I've already got my glitter adhered right on there. So it kind of saves you a step. Both ways are great. If you have some loose glitter that you wanna use, obviously Mod Podge is your best bet, but if you kind of want no mess and you want it all in one step, Glitterific really kind of does the job. And you know, one thing about Glitterific is that you can you can have it be thin, like if you just brush on a thin layer uh, where right. it's where you're just getting uh, bits of, of glitter in there, or you can almost do like a trowel effect and put it on super chunky to where yeah. it's uh, very, very thick and covered. You can so kind of see that. I've done like a really big swipe of it there. So you can see how dense that glitter is. It almost yeah. matches the density of our Mod Podge glitter. And then yeah. as you kind of go down, so that's a little bit of a medium application. Then there's kind of a lighter, lighter application. It's really a cool product. We use it for everything. You can coat uh, statues in it. We do a lot of projects that are like fully just glittered out and they're really, really neat. Makes for a really impressive presentation. All right, so I'm gonna keep doing a few of these brush strokes. So Dylan, Scott wants to know if you dip the brush in Mod Podge and then into, I assume, dry glitter yeah. and try to apply it that way, would that work? I don't, I don't know, know that that would that. work. Yeah, you that might that just work. make a mess, but yeah, you could try you might it. Be able to, you might, yeah, try it. You might be able to save yourself a step, but you know, also just using uh, the bare Mod Podge, you can kind of see where you're you're applying it. So if you were doing that with just glitter and Mod Podge on your paintbrush, you might not see exactly where you're applying it. So I would maybe steer away from that. Mm -hmm. I would definitely go and check out Plaid's website and look up Glitterific. Um, uh, because you will, we have a ton of inspiration on there and just some project ideas. You would, um, you, you know, you'll love it. And there's lots of different different things that you can do with it. So I encourage you to check that out. Yeah, we've done everything with it. One really cool way to use it is over top a paint color. So if you're, you know, painting, say like a ceramic flower or something, and you just want a little bit more of a um, pop of color on there, you can put this on top and you can do it like John said, you can either do it really thick or really thin. And then you add that incredible glitter shine. So it really kind of blows the project up to another level. Yeah. Okay, so that's about it for my wine bottle. So I've gone ahead and just made those brush strokes all over. You can kind of see the difference there. I did these brush strokes a little bit smaller so they don't look exactly alike, but you know, two ways to apply glitter with some awesome, um, awesome products. So I see another question, is that glitter glue or glitter paint, I think she said. So this yeah. is glitter suspended in a clear base. So it's kind of a hybrid, but it's not just one type of glitter. It's a bunch of different sizes and shapes of glitter. So it's kind of the ultimate glitter application. And it'll dry totally clear. It has a nice gloss to it as well. So if you want to kind of use it as a finish, um, you might have uh, joined us for some of our Let's uh, Let's Paint little series with Michaels, our paint nights. Um, Jesse and Kirsten, I know, have used uh, Glitterific before on their paintings. It's an awesome way to kind of get some shine on something yeah. that otherwise would just be kind of two-dimensional. So, Jensi, real quick, because she was asking, uh, did he said coat the bottle in Mod Podge to give to give the shine. So, if you're using like a gloss Mod Podge, once you put your paper down, you could cover the whole thing in glossy yeah. Mod Podge to give it that shine first, then go back and yeah. do the next step with the Mod Podge and glitter, if right. you wanna do that. Yeah, we kind of just stuck with the, the matte finish of the paper so that you get that really big distinction from your sparkly glitter to your matte paper, but you can absolutely do that. And that would help seal it too, you know? Obviously this is probably not something that is gonna be, you know, meant to be around for a long time. This is just to be enjoyed. Um, but if you really want to seal that that paper on, like I said, if you're going to be like hand washing it or something, you can use our Mod Podge dishwasher safe. That's a great option. Okay, um, let's see. I think the next thing we're going to talk about is our little greeting card here. So this is a similar method, but this is you know a super easy gift idea. So um, you might have seen these guys hanging out on our table. These are the Craft Smart. 
um, card and envelope set. There's 80 um, sets in here. So this is a, a really good uh, deal for a bunch of just blank note cards that you can embellish. They have great little shapes on them. I'm gonna move our bottle to the side. They have great little graphics and I picked out the kind of Valentine's Day colors, but as you can see, there's all kinds of colors. You've got the turquoise, you've got yellow, green, a bunch of different kinds, and they all come with blank white envelopes. So they're really perfect for crafting. I'm sure you could use these right out of the box and, and everybody uh, would be totally happy with a card from you, but we're gonna take it that uh, next level with um, some personalization. So I'm going to use the same card that's in our project listing, this little pink honeycomb card. And I'm actually going to use um, a paper stencil. So we have these great little craft smart stencils. This is called the Broadway Alphabet uh, stencil set that you can get at your local Michaels. And we're gonna use that to um, use our Mod Podge and then actually put the glitter over it. So a lot of people probably don't use Mod Podge to stencil with, but it's a great tool if you need to adhere something in a, per a certain shape or an icon or in our case, in the shape of a letter. So I'm gonna make John a little Valentine uh, here. So we're gonna use the J stencil. Thank you, Dylan. I am looking forward yes. to receiving that in my office. In yes, my office. sir. So we've got our little card. Like I said, it's just a blank note card. And I'm going to start by using that stencil. So you can see how clear um, a place to apply the Mod Podge is. This makes it super, super easy. You could do this with Glitterific too. You know, you could just place your stencil down place your Glitterific all over your stencil, and then you can lift your stencil up. So maybe we'll try that too. I actually um, haven't done that. So that might be a cool way to apply glitter as well. Okay, so I'm gonna grab one of my Mod Podge brushes and I'm gonna apply a pretty hefty amount of Mod Podge. Cause remember this is, you know, you're, you're stenciling with glitter basically. So there's a little bit of um, give for your design. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect because that glitter is gonna make it a little um, different. So I've gone ahead and I put my Mod Podge on there. I've got to act quickly here and put my glitter on. I think I'm gonna use the gold this time. These are these giant gold and uh, rose gold glitter packs that we got at Michael's. These are awesome. We use these for everything. Pop that open. I guess the surprise is ruined though for you, John. Hmm. I don't know what to say about that. Yeah. You're going to have to come up with something else to go along with it. That's a surprise. <laughs> Maybe you'll get a full wine bottle. Not there we just, go. Oh, I like not that. Not just an empty one. <laughs> yeah. That bottle did not start out empty, Dylan. No, no, no. I don't know what happened to it, but. No, no, no. You're probably to blame. <laughs> yes, if you guys have had some classes on here before, we have a lot of content creators that love to make these projects. So. <sighs> All right, so cool. Look, we have a glittery little J there. Perfect. Um, I'm gonna show you that same thing of using um, your brush strokes to make those little Mod Podge areas we showed you on a horizontal card here. I'm just gonna flip it vertical for John's and maybe we'll do, I don't know, I was thinking about doing another shape, but I don't know if I can do many more shapes. So maybe so we'll do like a little triangle. Here's a question for the reusable, you know, because those stencils are are reusable. If you get a little bit mod, a little Mod Podge on the surface of the stencil, you can yeah. quickly wipe it while it's wet. But honestly, it's going to dry perfectly clear and it's not right. going to hurt anything. So you can let yeah. that be. And, you know, if you guys have ever um, just like bursted in with a tip here. So if you have ever used um, or, or stenciled like a sign, um, you might know that sometimes stencils are prone to bleeding if you use too much paint and using you know, your stencil brush in the wrong way. Sometimes those stencils um, bleed. So one really cool thing is, to know is that these um, stencils with Mod Podge is actually a great tool if you're making that sign. Because if you were to say, have a design laid out and you have your stencils and you're ready to paint, go ahead and lay your design down and then you can stencil with any formula of Mod Podge that you have stencil over your whole design and then apply paint afterwards and then you kind of seal your stencil off so that you don't get any bleeding underneath. Now it's not completely fail safe but I've used it in a pinch and it really helps especially if you're making signs maybe with kids. Um, that kind of helps if you know parents want to go around and go ahead and get a clear coat on there before their kids go at it with a, too much paint. So that's something to know too. Yeah that's a great idea. So now I'm just doing little 
triangles on John's card here. These can be kind of free form. And you could even use a different stencil. You know, um, Michaels carries all kinds of stencils with all different shapes. So you could use like a tinier stencil and stencil with Mod Podge and then put the glitter on it as well. I'm just kind of free forming with my brush, but I'm just getting these kind of loose little triangles. So it's pretty, you can use it for pretty much everything. I'm sure if you've used Mod Podge uh, and you're on this class, you'd probably know that already, but. Mm -hmm. We so have a lot of Mod Podge classes. Why don't we use that? We can use while you're doing some more triangles, we can talk about that. Yeah. Um, obviously, you guys know how to find the Michaels classes because you've registered and managed to get yourself here. But if you go to that same page where you registered, all of the past classes are also on there. And there is a whole series of Mod Podge classes on there that we have done over the last I don't know, six or eight months or whatever it is. So yeah. uh, feel free to check those out. Um, it's yeah, not only covered, Mod Podge, of course, but paint and all kinds of things. But right, we've covered so many different things. We, you know, you've probably seen a lot of classes having to do with Mod Podge Ultra. Mod Podge Ultra is another product in the line that is so um, useful for all kinds of different crafts. Um, we'll also talk about in just a second Mod Podge Paper Formula. Um, but yeah, there's so many different projects you can make under our product line. It's just crazy. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'll do one or two more of these, but you kind of get the point. It's just, you know, cute little freeform shapes. You can kind of do this in anything you want. You could let your kids just have at it with their brush and paint all over a piece of paper, write um, some notes, and then you kind of dump that glitter on and then get your, your final reveal. It's kind of a cool way to do it. Yes. Tanya, yes, there is a Mod Podge outdoor formula also. Yeah, absolutely. All right, I'll finish that one. And John, I'll finish putting the triangles on for you later, okay? Okay. That's your preview, there it is. I don't wanna have a half finished Valentine. I don't know. Up. Okay, so um, another product that I wanted to highlight here is Mod Podge paper. So Mod Podge paper is meant to glue paper to paper. You know, as you know, Mod Podge, uh, the original formula is gloss, satin, or matte. They can also be used to um, glue paper to paper, but the paper um, finish is uh, acid-free, so it's good for archiving, and you can also um, minimize the risk of your paper curling. So it's been formulated to be a little bit more user-friendly when you're doing, say, like cardstock or, or paper, um, sorry, what I'm trying to say, um, card making, a scrapbooking, that kind of thing. So if I were say, you know, I popped our little cardboard stencil uh, letter out of our stencil and I could reuse, we love a reusable craft. I could just put that guy on there with our Mod Podge paper. So I'll kind of show you how to do that. And it's really kind of nice to have a formula that is not going to necessarily curl up around the edges. I'll coat the back of my stencil here. Now, like I said, this kit um, of cards and envelopes comes with the envelope, uh, the blank envelope. So you can have another opportunity to craft on that. So you could do the same kind of monogram situation, or you could do a different design. You could paint on it. You can do all kinds of things. I'll place that guy down. And this is the matte formula. So we're not going to see um, any kind of sheen coming out of there. So there you go. So it's paper to paper. It's great for putting photos in on scrapbook paper, that kind of thing. Um, it just keeps everything lasting nice and long. So got that little card. All right. Um, let's see. I'm going to talk about that glitterific with our stencil because I have never tried that. So I want to see how that works. So we're going to use our red card here. So if you're just joining us, you know, we've been using Mod Podge Gloss along with um, some of these bigger glitter packs. Um, but we are also showcasing our full card glitterific. So this is a great product if you are trying to get the effective glitter, but you don't want the mess and all of the aftermath uh, like is on our table right now. So I'm gonna grab another one of my stencils. So like I said, 
We're using the Broadway alphabet stencil pack. This is kind of a unique design, so that's why I chose it. And let's see here. I think I'm going to do the letter K. If you guys have been on any of our Michaels classes, you'll know that we are led by our fearless leader, Kira, and she is the craft queen. So we'll make her a Valentine as well. That sounds good. All right. So you can see these stencils are really cool. They're kind of that art, art deco, um, like playbill type typeface. It's mm. kind of a neat design. Okay, so let's put our letter on here. Now, like I said, I've never tried this, so no promises, but I think it'll work. I think it'll hey, work pretty well. Hey, Dylan, someone was asking, I think she has some, some glitterific where it's kind of settled to the bottom. You could just take like the handle of a little paintbrush or something like that and kind of stir that up, yeah? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. I know that that can happen from time to time. If, if you know, if the one you've gotten has, has been sitting for a bit, some of the glitter may have settled. Right, you can, yeah. We, you can certainly get in there and just sort of stir it back up. Yeah. You'd use, sometimes we use skewers, or like I said, if you have any kind of those silicone um, craft tools, those are perfect for really everything, for stirring your glitterific, for applying it. Yeah. They're really nice, like a mini and, spatula. And what Dylan is doing here, you can see that he could either just really brush that out pretty thin, or you could, um, if you want complete opaque coverage, then you're gonna kind of have to chunk it on there pretty good. But it's a different look, but either one is great. And it'll leave you with such like a glossy finish. That's one of the best things about it. It almost looks like, you know, glitter encased in glass. It's really pretty. Mm -hmm. It's just both of these products are so versatile. I mean, it, a lot of the comments and different things are people are, are expressing ideas and you could use this instead of uh, paper or you could paint first or you can use washi tape. And th the answer is yes, 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 and yes. I mean, yeah, that's so, awesome. I'm, I'm so glad yeah. it sounds like people are excited. Right, I mean, th that's what's great about this stuff is that Mod Podge is probably the ultimate, you know, crafting um, <clears throat> product for for variation and for uh, range of use. So it's it's great. And yeah, this glitterific is kit. so many different ways. Yeah. The other cool thing about Glitterific is you have some time and some flexibility to kind of move your glitter particles around. So you can kind of organize it as crazy as that sounds. You know, if you've ever done a project with glitter, you kind of know that it's a, a one and done type situation. Once you've got that glitter on there, there's not really much readjusting. Um, and that's the cool thing about Glitterific. You have that little bit of an extended dry time. So mm -hmm. you can kind of, if you know, you'll notice there are tons of really, really big flakes of glitter in here. So those can be utilized in all kinds of different places on your craft project. So you can kind of organize it. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna do a reveal here and then I'll hold it up to the camera. Let's hope that it came out cool. Like I said, this is possibly a new technique for me. So look at that. It Ooh, came out. That did, that's, that's so cool. cool. Yeah. yeah, like John said, you could just wipe this off and use it again. These have a nice little kind of waxy coating on top. So they're, they're still those um, cardboard type stencils, but they have that durability to them. That's really nice. I'll add a little bit of more, bit more of that. Like I said, yeah, you can just clean it up after after you pull it off and touch up little spots. That's great. That looks that very cool? cool. I had never done that. That's a neat neat uh, neat application. So that's what I was talking about. You know, I can I just moved that little corner piece um, of glitter that was kind of sticking out, and now I've got this hefty. It almost looks embossed. It's really cool, and it'll stay pretty much that dimensional. It has like a pretty good body to it, this glitterific, so it can kind of stand alone. Let's see. So I'm just going to add a little bit more. Now, I would love to know if anybody is crafting for Valentine's Day this year. Um, if you've seen our feed at all, we've been crafting all kinds of awesome projects for some inspiration, but we would love to see what you are making. Obviously Valentine's Day is a little different this year. So it would be great to know if you guys are making different cards for everybody. If you are um, bringing gifts like these to your gal pals and leaving them. I know um, a big trend this year has been um, dropping things on your friend's um, doorstep to kind of keep, uh, keep everything nice and clean and still give that gift. So um, we'd love to see that. So John That's mentioned earlier. I mean 
there's probably no better door drop than a nice bottle of wine with a uh, custom right. label on it. People will be right. thrilled to get that. So right. that's just a great leave, idea. You could just leave a little bit of that back label showing just so that they know it's a really nice bottle. And yeah. You, but it's still, <laughs> still nice and beautiful, right? Um, one thing you can I drop the three buck chuck with your uh, with right. your custom or label. you can hide it. Yes, correct. Yeah. That's, a, that's a good way. Just rip that label off, and if they complain, sad well, them. as um, as Dylan just said, we really do want to see these uh, projects that you're making. Anything that you made today in this class, or things that you're going to make in the next couple of days, or what have you, leading up to Valentine's Day. So please yeah. um, hashtag. Um, you tag plaid crafts for one and also use the hashtags make it with michaels and michaels classes because they really want to see um all the things that people are making so i will put those in the chat just so you can remember what those are but we are very much looking forward to and we share um we do fan fridays at plaid so we share stuff all the time that we see that people make with us so we are super excited to to see what you're going to make yeah it's one of our favorite parts of our meetings here is seeing uh, people using our hashtags and using our products. So we'd love to see um, more of what you guys have to share. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that kind of wraps it up for last minute Valentine's Day crafts. I know this one was a little bit of a short one, but there were some great projects that you can easily adapt to whatever you are looking to make for your Galentine or your Valentine or your Broventine. Mm -hmm. All Valentine's uh, celebrations welcome here. So um, like John said, hashtag uh, make it with Michaels, hashtag plaid crafts, and um, we will be following up tomorrow, I believe. We have another Michaels class, so we'd love to see you then as well. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. Oh, wait, in. Dylan, uh, before we let them get away, oh we're going to do it. The giveaway. The giveaway. Yes. All here for the, the People stuff. are going to be know, like, what the heck? That's the best part. That's the best part. Okay, Promise take it away, John. Away. Sorry. All right, well, now I got to scroll up here. I'm just going to go about halfway up, and let's just see how a about how about this how about debbie sutton so debbie uh go to uh plaid crafts facebook page if you can and just send us a direct message and say that you were in the michaels class today and you were selected as a winner debbie said by the way she says i've crafted i've crafted all my life and now my three granddaughters love to come to my house and craft with me it's wonderful oh that's awesome perfect sentiment so i wanted to uh, choose that one um, so like I said, Debbie, go to Plaid Crafts on Facebook and just send us a message and we will get you your, your prize pack out. Man, we got so much support for Debbie. That's yes, awesome. everybody saying course. congrats. That's great. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys so much. Um, we'll see you next time. That sounds Bye, great. Guys. Bye.